there, everyone. That sexy nerd is coming at you again. And we we got a new episode of uh, Casual Geographic on there, so I had to watch this episode. Ugh. Uh, so, yeah, um, last one was great. Uh, it was scary because nope, nope. That, that's basically what we were all saying the entire last episode. So, and, you know, it's just like the movie. I got to watch that movie again. I, 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 I've never seen it, so I, I do have to see it. As I said in my review, I have to watch it again. Uh, but yeah, I'm kind of interested to see where this video goes. Oh yes, and also uh, I'm doing a Nostalgia Critic episode later, so stay tuned for that. Um, with that being said, hey, let's just get into the episode. And remember, please like and subscribe if you want to see more sexy and nerdy content. And let's do this thing, y'all. <laughs> let's talk about Freya. Freya was a female walrus famous for showing up in Norway when her kind is usually found hundreds of miles north in the Arctic. She was also known for accidentally sinking boats by sunbathing on top of them. All 1,300 pounds of her. But what made Freya different from other walruses was that not only was she not afraid of people, she was curious and would actively approach them. And it wasn't long until Freya gained a fan club that would gather around just to watch Freya be herself. Aww. But you already know how it goes, we can't have nice things. Crowds of people would completely surround her and get close enough to touch her, and some people would even throw things at her. Oh. Now you would think people would be smart enough to social distance from something in the same weight class as a car. But then you'd be giving people a lot of credit they don't deserve. Yeah. In one incident, Freya chased a woman that got too close into water. Even with all these problems, officials said that taking her out would be the last possible option and that Freya would probably just leave on her own. Mm. Well, she didn't and neither did the people that were told to leave her alone. Now, they could have tried to relocate her, but tranquilizing and hauling something that can weigh four shacks can go wrong in a lot of ways. So on August 14th, they took Freya out. Permanently. Why? With the only thing she ever did wrong was trusting people. You want to know the worst part, though? The only reason she was there in the first place was probably because of global warming. Yeah, Moral likely. of this video, y'all remember what happened to the world after Harambe became a hashtag? Don't be surprised when life hits us with the Tsukuyomi for flatlining Freya. Now nah, we gotta spin- Yeah, you know, he needs to go over why the hell they would even kill her. Why the hell would they even kill her? Like, just to be dicks? Give me a break, people. I spin the block on this whole Freya thing, because I got more I want to say. Uh, Sparkle's version, Freya was a 1,300-pound walrus that popped up in Norway and wasn't afraid of people, and because of that, people kept getting way too close to her. Despite the whole, you know, 1,300 pounds thing. Mm -hmm. Eventually, she ended up getting put down for the crime of trusting people. The sad thing is, we've seen this before. This is a Caribbean monk seal. There used to be hundreds of thousands of them, but the last one became past tense in 2008. People found out that these seals have oil in their blood. Oh, had. Had oil in their blubber. As a result, they got hunted with extreme prejudice. Wow. Those that didn't starve to a flatline after those same people, people overfished off the reefs they hunted on. But the biggest reason why this seal's gone for good is gonna hurt you. You see, the seals weren't afraid of people. They were naturally curious and wouldn't run away when humans would approach them because I guess they didn't see humans as a threat. That trust in people got them put on a billboard. Like people would just walk up to a sunbathing seal and just cancel its entire life subscription. That's, that's we staff patted them so hard that the seal that used to be all over the islands got discontinued by us. And best believe, they're not the only ones whose trust in people got taken advantage mm -hmm. of. But it might just be the saddest. Which brings us to Freya, who was literally in a no-win situation. She trusted people too much, people abused it, and she got put out of order for it. But if she had been more aggressive with people and actually squared up with them, all 1,300 pounds of her would have been cancelled anyway. Yep. Long story short, we haram made a walrus and nature finna bend us over for it. Yeah, I should probably explain. So that right there, you know the paralysis demon with wings? That's actually a harpy eagle. eagle. It's one of the biggest eagles in the world, with talons the size of grizzly claws, mm -hmm. with a grip almost as strong as Rottweiler jaws. Jeez. And even though this satanic pigeon could probably violate if it wanted to, they're actually not dangerous to people. There's friendly. no recorded case of one attacking a human, let alone murking one. The problem is they also have no fear of humans. I mean, why would you when you look like that? <laughs> but their lack of fear also makes them a popular target for exotic hunters deleting them for... I don't know, sport, fun, the excitement they don't get in bed, honestly, who can say? I know, so buck beaks understudy it. is almost endangered, and a big reason is because they make the mistake of trusting people. Kind of like this guy. This is a quokka. It's yeah. basically a fun-sized kangaroo, and since the ones on islands have no natural predators, they also have zero fear of humans, yeah. which is why these selfies exist. But because we are the Earth's acne, some people will really wake up and decide to use their trust in humans against it. How you can hurt something that's literally serotonin with fur is beyond me. I'm not going to show you for obvious reasons, but there have been cases of people seeing this quokka and then kicking them and throwing them into walls for... Like, again, I really don't know what has to go wrong in life for you to think that's what okay. What the hell? And because we live in a generation of telling on yourself, a lot of these people are the ones that post the videos. The world's happiest animal and someone decides they want to try to score a field goal with it. Whole time, the only thing the quokka ever did wrong was assume it was safe to be around people. That's terrible. I know one thing, though. 
Yeah, I wouldn't try it with his big homie. We're going to yeah, talk exactly. about animals that we've done dirty. Then I don't think any of them has a worse extinction story than this one right mm -hmm. here. This is a thylacine, but you probably know it as a Tasmanian, Tasmanian tiger. Though. Even tiger. though it's a marsupial, meaning it has more in common with kangaroos, koalas, and the devil than an actual tiger. Why it looks like nature tried to redraw tigers blindfolded is because of convergent evolution. And long story short, convergent evolution is just two people coming up with similar answers to the same test. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the Tasmanian tiger was an apex predator, meaning if you ever wanted to call Australia or Tasmania home, you'd have to pay property taxes to the thylacine. Its downfall started the second settlers touched down in its area code and started colonizing the hell out of them. Not only did these settlers start gentrifying their home, they also air ubered a bunch of European born diseases that the thylacine was not ready for. But what really did them in was the Tasmanian government straight up putting bounties on their heads. That's terrible. People were actively encouraged to take the Tasmanian tiger off the census, which meant hunters dropping career highs on their numbers just to feed their families. It also didn't help that when settlers first came on the scene, a new challenger came with them. The introduction of dingoes, dingoes. by settlers just meant more competition. And if they didn't help drive the thylacine to oblivion, they certainly didn't make life any easier. Farmers didn't take any pity on them as they would murk thylacines on site to protect their livestock. To add insult to genocide, we now believe that the thylacine's jaws were actually too weak to kill the sheep they were accused of taking. Wow. So we pretty much racially profiled them to extinction. Mm -hmm. And to make it worse, because even nature decided to get its licks in, some researchers believe that the sheep deaths that the thylacine got blamed for were actually caused by dingoes. Yep. The same dingoes that settlers brought in the first place. No, no. So between trigger-happy humans, canine competition, and European germs, the thylacine's ticket was pretty much punched. But once we realized how close they were to becoming a history lesson, we finally decided to help try to bring them back from the brink by raising them in captivity. Nope. Which went well, until a bunch wow. of them caught distemper and became chalk outlines anyway. That's terrible. The last wild thylacine was shot in 1930 by a farmer whose name I'm not even going to bother saying. And after all that, the last man standing was a male Tassie tiger named Benjamin in the Bohart Zoo. Until he got put on a shirt in 1936, ultimately ending the entire bloodline. Now class, anyone want to take a guess how Benjamin became a hashtag? Well, a little fun fact about Tasmania, on rare occasions the days can be blisteringly hot while the nights become brutally cold. One night Benjamin got locked out and froze to a flat line. Cause not even the forces of nature were about to let him slide. Nope. And that's how the last of an entire species died. Someone left him out. And to add insult to extinction, the thylacine was officially given protected species status two months before they got discontinued for good. After decades of putting them in Twitter bios, that feels like gaslight. Yeah. Now there have been talks of scientists trying to bring the thylacine back. And some who believe the thylacine never left at all. We just haven't Shh, found the rest yet. Please. And to be honest, do you remember how I said we've done some really questionable things in the name of science like this? Well, once we attempted something so unethical that all I have to say is one word for you to truly understand what time it is. One word. Human Z. It's exactly what it sounds oh, no. like. Basically a Soviet biologist tried to cosplay as God and create a human chimpanzee hybrid. Why? You see, that's the thing. I don't think we ask why enough in science. No. As in, why in the f Why was this funded? So why? yeah, they tried to see if a, a chimp garden could do something with a human seed. If it means anything, at least they didn't like... They, they, they didn't... Nah, instead they artificially planted human seeds in three female chimpanzees. Still Ew. very questionable, but it could have been worse. And if I wasn't on a watch list before, that sentence definitely did it. But surprise, surprise, nothing happened. Okay. And I don't think the world would have had the tools to handle if it did. Also, China took a swing at this in the 60s. So while the Soviet Union and the US had a PP measuring contest all the way into space, China researchers were busy trying to create a human chimpanzee chimera. Next to hand servicing dolphins and giving them LSD, this might be the most sus thing we've ever called science. This is the weirdest looking extinct animal you've ever heard of. I'll go first. This, Adipodentatus. This is a correction to the original reconstruction they had of it. I hear you loud and clear, and I get it, but tell you what, I'll see your autopodentatus and raise you one platabelodon. Uh, it was a three-ton so herbivorous semi-aquatic middle Plata finger to the natural world. It's like if nature tried to redraw elephants strictly from memory, but while also tweaking off six hits of acid. It's believed it used its mouth as a shovel, rubbing it against trees to cut the bark to eat it. I say believe because when your skull looks like a pissed off power tool, the best science can do is guess. Yeah. They were around in the Miocene about 15 million years ago, and scientists say they went extinct after a massive drought turned them all into a history lesson. Mm, or sense. if you believe in God, he might not make mistakes, but he knows when to put a rough draft back in the vault. <laughs> you might believe in God, but God did not believe in them. It's like nature took the animal I love the most and turned it into a bad trip with legs. Because not even a nice skating Satan on acid could come up with this paralysis demon. What is the most underrated animal in your opinion? Oh, that's easy. All right, so here's a little little pop quiz for y'all. What, what is the most widespread carnivore in the entire world? Carnivore being an animal that eats mostly meat. Any guesses? 
human? No. It's actually them. Oh, Believe it or not, yeah. there are actually 40 different subspecies of red fox, and not all of them are red. Some are silver, some are black, some are confused. Are weird this colors. one's a Pokemon. <laughs> foxes can pretty much live wherever they feel like. In 1870, settlers actually brought over foxes to Australia, because I guess fox hunting is like a pretty big English thing, like crumpets and tea and losing the World Cup. About 8 million foxes <laughs> later, I'd say they'd regret it if they were alive to see what they did. You probably live right next to a fox and have no idea. Yeah. I've lived in New Jersey 25 years, and I've seen a fox in real life like twice, and both times were by accident. Oh. As part of a Soviet experiment, researchers were able to somewhat domesticate silver foxes. They did this by taking the foxes that were the most friendly and least afraid of people and breeding them. It's like God had leftovers after making cats and dogs, decided to make casserole and out popped the fox. They're like dogs that identify as cats. They Almost are. forgotten, red foxes made for life. They believe in monogamy. Yeah, Meaning the average fox is doing a whole lot better than the rest of us. <laughs> the only continent that doesn't have a fox on it is the one God turned into Satan's skating rink. They're nature's overachievers. If they have haters, it's because they're just too good at life. So We've all had this question at one point, and if you fox. say you haven't, you're a liar. That question being, if we weren't here, what animal would run the world? Uh, you know what? This might be a hot take. But I really think we are one Thanos right. snap away from seeing crows in a driver's seat. Mm. Crows, ravens, corvids in general, they're all too smart for anyone else's good. And one day they're going to turn on us and it's going to be bad. I'm not going to talk about the fact that ravens are low-key domesticating wolves the same way we did. Or that crows have the intelligence and a problem-solving ability of a seven-year-old. And you probably already know that crows are smart enough to drop nuts on crosswalks, pause, let a car run over it, and then wait for the walk sign to go claim their prize. Not only are crows smart enough to use tools, some scientists say the Caledonian crow has entered its own stone age. And while yeah. crows can't recognize their own reflection, they do understand pulls. how mirrors work. Basically, in an experiment, crows are able to find an object not in their direct line of sight by using its reflection in a nearby mirror. Not only can crows and ravens remember faces for years, but they'll go on to teach their kids not to mess with you. Both ravens and crows can hold grudges, especially if they feel like they've been wronged. When a crow sees another dead crow, it'll call out to its other crow bros and they'll investigate the cause of its death to make sure the area is still safe for them. They're even smart enough to have self-control. In another experiment, crows were willing to deny a piece of food if doing so meant they got a bigger reward down the line. And I'm just realizing this, but that also means crows and ravens can plan for the future. That's true. Yeah, that, that, that's not normal. And we've already seen what happens when crows turn on people. Crows in Tokyo have gotten bold enough to straight up attack people for food, for territory, or just for the sport of it. Wow. They'll even go as far as to purposely take aim and drop deuces on people. Those same Tokyo crows have memorized the garbage schedules of different parts of the city, so when crows pull up, it's not by accident. There's a reason why Rip chose crows. One day we're gonna get real life Hitchcocked and it's not gonna be good. I guess he had nothing better to, uh, to, to put up there, because I know he did that video before, but yo man, that is... The, the stuff we've done to all these animals that don't deserve it is, is ridiculous, you know, and it just seems to be getting worse and worse. You know, Tiger King, but let's let's not get into that. And we really need to change our ways. I really hope we can, but it doesn't seem likely. It, we didn't change back then. We're smarter now. We still haven't changed. There's still many idiot people out there that think abusing animals is the, the or, or hunting animals is like the only way they can get their manhood or womanhood up it's ridiculous i don't i don't know how up they would do it, but whatever <laughs> but yeah um i love i love his stuff i want him to do a new one soon but you know hey uh they're just gonna have to wait for more crazy animal stuff to to happen so this has been that sexy nerd reacts please like and subscribe if you want to see more sexy and nerdy content and i'll see you all in the next video